Welcome back, everybody. This is another Chris Course with your host, Chris. And in this episode, I'm going to be covering Browser Sync Plugin and Webpack, but this time we're going to cover how to use it with backend files. So in the last episode, we used the Browser Sync Plugin to reload our browser whenever we made a change to a static file, specifically an HTML file. This time, we're going to learn how to use the plugin to reload the browser whenever we make a change to a backend file, specifically .php. So before I begin, it should be noted that if you'd like to follow along, I do have a Git repo in the description. And if you want to go ahead and clone the repo, just make sure that you type npm install or yarn and hit the terminal to ensure that you're downloading all of the package's dependencies. So to begin, what do we need to do in order to make sure that Browser Sync reloads the browser whenever we make a change to a PHP file? Well, let's go ahead and run Webpack in the terminal and see what we get with our current status, our current configuration file. We're going to go ahead and run Webpack like this. And you can see over here that this is the exact same setup we left off with in the last episode. So you can see that currently the browser is displaying hello and it's reading from index.html. And if we make a change to this file, you're going to see it's reloaded automatically, which is really nice. But we want to make sure that the browser is reading from index.php and not index.html. So we're going to go ahead and delete index.html. And you'll see that browser sync reloaded automatically and is trying to read index.php, but unfortunately it can't. And that is because we need to make sure that index.php is being processed by a PHP server before we hand it off to browser sync. So in order to do this, we're going to make a change to this browser sync plugin configuration. The first thing we're going to do is delete this server property and replace it with a proxy property. Now this proxy property, we are going to assign a URL to this and this URL um, you can kind of think of the proxy property as a handoff, basically. Essentially, what's going to happen is we're going to make sure that index.php is processed by a PHP server. And then once it's processed, we're going to hand it off to the browser sync plugin to watch for changes and watch all of our files. And it'll reload the browser automatically whenever we make a change to one of them. So this proxy property is equal to the URL we would visit our site on after it's processed by a PHP server. So the first thing we need is a PHP server to do this. And for this video, I'm going to be using MAMP, which spins up a quick PHP server on your computer. It is a Mac program. If you have a Windows computer, then simply download WAMP. It does the same thing. It just spins up a quick PHP server on your computer, and you can use it to process all of your PHP files. So in order for MAMP to work, in order for it to process PHP files, you need to make sure that your PHP files are within a particular directory called htdocs. So right now, my project, if I look inside Finder, let me open up Finder real quick. All right. So if we look in my Finder and look under htdocs, you're going to see that my project is already within this. You can see CC Browser Sync Part 2. So you want to make sure that your project is within this PHP server. Um, so to visit any project within your PHP server, with MAMP specifically, all you need to do is get rid of this 3000 and visit localhost. For some servers and some configurations, it might be localhost 8080. Um, but for my case, I have MAMP set up, so it only has to read from localhost instead. So I can go down to my project directory, enter it, and if I go inside distribution, you're going to see that our PHP file is being read by a PHP server. If I go ahead and delete this hello text and refresh the page manually, you're going to see hello text is gone. So let's go and reinsert our hello text so we know that uh, we have text on the screen that's ready to be displayed to the browser. But the next step is going to be having browser sync reload the browser automatically when we make a change to this PHP file. So like I said, the proxy is a handoff. We're handing off the URL from this to our browser sync plugin and browser sync plugin will take care of the rest. So all we have to do here is grab our URL from our PHP server, put it within this proxy property, and then we just need to restart browser sync. So whenever we make a change to webpack config, you have to restart webpack. That's what we're going to do. Let's wait for it to compile. And you're going to see that we are connected to browser sync. So now you'd expect if I go to index.php and make a change to this, it would reload automatically. But unfortunately, that's not the case. We do have to make one more configuration update before we do this. So the configuration update we have to make is right now we're watching for all HTML files. We have to watch for all PHP files because those are the files that we are editing. So we're going to go ahead and make that change, save the file, restart Webpack. And it opened up on my other screen. Let me go ahead and pull it on over here. So now if I make a change to index.php, 
delete hello. You're going to see that browser sync manages that automatically. And we don't have to do anything. We don't have to go over here, press something like Command R, Control R. And it's really nice because it saves us a ton of time in the long run. And I love it. I don't, I don't want to ever have to go over to my browser and refresh again. Um, so this can actually be taken a step further. Uh, there is a way to ensure that whenever you make a change to a CSS file, the CSS is injected automatically into the browser and you don't actually even see a page refresh like this. You just see the styles update automatically. Now, I have to admit, I have not learned how to do that just yet, but I can promise you once I do, this is definitely something I want to share with you guys because I want to make sure that you guys as developers are having the most enjoyable development experience possible while saving efficiency and time in the long run. So that's it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you find this useful. If you would like to use Browser Sync for another backend language, you can still do the same exact thing we covered here. You just have to make sure that you're using the correct URL within this proxy property and ensuring that you're watching the correct files. So I hope you enjoyed everyone, and I hope you learned something new, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Later guys.